With no info on RDNA 3 in their keynote, do you think AMD is still releasing it this year in the same time frame as Zen 4? Or do you think due to the chip shortages and the recent stopgap refresh will push the release to next year? I don't think them not showing RDNA 3 in the keynote has anything to do with their release timeframes. I think it's more that companies these days are realizing that you can kind of dominate the news cycle by only talking about one thing at a time. So you kind of, you have your Zen 4 announcement Mm -hmm. and then rather than, you know, making all these other announcements at the same time, you just wait a couple of weeks and then I mean, you, you make another announcement. And then yeah, it's like, that's true. Then it's AMD news, then it's AMD news, and it keeps going on. Well, maybe AMD's finally worked that out, but AMD seems to have really struggled with that concept over the years. Yes. It's like they just bombard you with everything they've done on one day. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to rag on AMD too much here, but their strategies have been pretty bad. Or the strategies that they were going, like they wanted to release. They actually, from memory, they wanted to release uh, the 6,000. Was it? Zen no, it was the 5, Zen 2 and the 5,000 series GPUs on the same day. They did that though, right? They, they did, did do that. Yeah, did they? I think so. And they wanted to do it again with 6,000. I'm sure those reviews were all jumbled together. Um, Let's check that quickly. All right, we're back. We quickly confirmed that. Uh, I was right. So RDNA, the original, so the 5,000 series, the RX 5,000 series. That launched simultaneously with Zen 2. And I remember that because it was horrific. I had to get, like, CPU testing alone is very time consuming and very difficult. But so reviewers had to get 5000 series GPUs and 3000 series uh, CPUs out at the same time simultaneously. And that was just a really, I mean, there's no, I've got no other word for it. It was dumb. That was a really yeah. dumb way of launching two exciting product lines. Yeah, you need to let your products breathe so that people mm-hmm. can digest the information on that thing and then move to the next thing. Yeah. If you're releasing all your Zen 2 parts and all your 5000 series GPUs at the same time, people are like, oh, well, what am I going to read about? And people, you know, a lot of the interesting things that are coming out get lost in all this giant cloud of information as people are like, looking at Zen 2, then looking at the GPUs and trying to figure out which parts are good. And Yeah, and the, you end up with... Well, we didn't rush the reviews, but you end up with rushed reviews because people are trying to cover everything. I think we prioritised the CPUs and then... I, I don't remember. Yeah. We basically said, no, nah, we're not doing that, and we, we, we picked one. And yeah, they wanted to do the same thing with the RX 6000 series and uh, Zen 3. And... They were, my understanding was they planned on doing that, but due to logistics or whatever, it had to end up being a few weeks separate. So I don't know, AMD doesn't seem to have learned that lesson and they mm. seem to not really get that. So, but maybe they've learned it. Maybe because, they've learned it. We can only hope. Because yeah, I think, yeah, like I was saying, I think it benefits AMD not to talk about their two separate lines in the same presentation. Yeah, I think so. Because then- You talk about all your AM AM4, well, now it's AM5 stuff, Mm -hmm. Zen 4. You go through that. You're like, here's all the things we're announcing. Then you get what exactly what we've just seen where people make their videos. You get everyone discussing it. Mm -hmm. You have your follow-up interviews with people. You have your Mm -hmm. follow-up discussion pieces. And this has kind of taken the next couple of weeks of the news cycle Mm -hmm. in that even, you know, the past couple of days, we've seen interviews with AMD, people clarifying further things. And I think that's a really positive thing for that product line and for AMD. And then later, once that kind of dies away, people are sort of waiting again for the next piece of news. That's when you want to hit them with the next. Yeah, it's just AMD, the next AMD, thing. AMD. That's all everyone's talking about. And you forget they have competitors. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you do it well, you can really do that. And, that's- and this, this is exactly what NVIDIA has done many times. And that's mm-hmm. why we haven't seen... At Compu- well, Computex has never been a major event for NVIDIA mm-hmm. as is, but NVIDIA always likes to have their own time and space to launch their products. Mm-hmm. So whenever there's a new generation, they're going to launch a couple of products in the one presentation and then that's it. Yeah. And then they might be back a month later mm-hmm. to launch the next product and then a month later for the next product and then they keep doing that. You never yeah. see them launch the 3050, 3060, 3060 Ti all at the same time. They just don't do that. Yeah, NVIDIA is kind of good at marketing, aren't they? They are pretty good. So, mm. yeah, I wouldn't read into this too much. I think it's still pretty likely to be coming out this year towards the end of the year. They just want it to have their own sort of announcement because with all the rumors of it being twice as fast as the previous gen, I think it kind of deserves its own own sort of announcement. Yep, if true, for sure.